So another thing with, with volume is frequency. And there was a time period where it seemed like a lot of people back in the day were doing like bro splits were really popular once, you know, training every muscle group once a week. And then there was a shift towards more frequency where it's like, Hey, you want to, to optimize things, hit each muscle group two or three times a week. And now it seems like we're kind of at a spot where, Hey, if volume's the same, it might not be too different. Is that kind of accurate? Yeah. So frequency cert, I, I would say there's still more we need to, uh, to learn about because of some of the designs and the research have not, at least in my, to my satisfaction, provided enough clarification on, uh, to, to make more pointed recommendations. But I would say that in general, frequency is not a, uh, a major, um, it would be, high, again, would be somewhat dependent how it's manipulated, but generally speaking, frequency is not a major uh, modulator of uh, hypertrophy. It's really a way to apportion. The way I like to talk about using frequency is to apportion volume. And yeah, overall, like bro splits can be very effective. When you start getting into the higher volume bro splits, like when people are doing 20 sets, let's say for uh, the quads, let's say for your legs. The old like Jay Cutler workouts. Correct. Yeah. 20, <laughs> 20 30 uh, sets for your mm -hmm. legs it's better to split that up into, uh, generally speaking, over more days. At least that's what the research tends to suggest. Now, it's not a huge difference, uh, but there is some logical basis for it based on the muscle protein synthetic response uh, to a given amount of volume in a given uh, session, as well as just uh, the limited literature we have do seem to show that when you're getting more than, let's say, eight to 10 sets, for a given muscle group uh, in a session, it's probably best to spread that out over uh, another day or two. So as you get higher and higher with your frequent, your volume in a given session. And, and look, here's the other thing I would say is that very long sessions in general just are not conducive to hypertrophy. So if you're gonna, if you're only doing two sessions a week and you're doing two, three hour sessions, it's just not a good strategy to training because by the time you're at your, two hour mark, you know, hour and a half to, you're just not going to have the same amount of uh, mental focus and energy to uh, properly train the muscles that are being done later in the session. So, yeah. Now, when we talk about strength, is that where frequency come becomes a little bit more important? You'd think so, but again, the limited, so I, I still am somewhat skeptical of the, the literature, I, look at this, you know, I'm a researcher and uh, I, uh, I'm a student of, of literature, but we also have to look at uh, when things don't make sense, we still need to question them. And, and you have to look at what the gaps are in the literature. I'll, I'll get to more of that in a minute, but uh, there, there's a logical basis just from a motor learning standpoint that the more frequent uh, practice that you give something, the greater your uh, adaptations from a motor learning standpoint are going to be. It hasn't really been borne out well in the literature. Again, the, uh, we, we did a, a systematic review on this that showed or, or that indicated that uh, volume really that there was a greater effect of frequency, but then when you accounted for volume, it really didn't matter much. Uh, I'm not willing to put all my eggs in that basket at this point. It might be, mm -hmm. uh, but again, just looking at it from a lot when, when the literature to me is not conclusive, when, when there are gaps in that literature, and when there is a logical rationale for where it doesn't quite make sense to me, I am skeptical about it. And I'm, I'm, I'm more uh, reserved in my opinions on things like that. Yeah. Well, I think you'd almost run into the same issue. Let's say, for, for example, you're a power lifter and you've built up to the point where you can handle quite a lot of bench volume, like you know, 12 to 15 bench sets per week. You're, you're almost going to need to split that up just because, you know, the difference between set three and set 15, like that couldn't be in one or two sets. I mean, it'd be hard to do that even two sessions. And, and so no studies have been carried out on the topic in well-trained powerlifters. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, you have to look at the ability, what's called generalization of findings, uh, which means that can you take these findings and necessarily apply it to a given population and, uh, you know, without has actually having powerlifters that are doing this. And in fairness, it's very difficult to get a group of powerlifters and you're going to say to them, all right, I just want you to lift 
once per week on your main lift. Uh, yep. You know, we're going to see most powerlifters don't want to regress. So mm -hmm. They're going to be very hardened into their uh, into their mindset as to what they want to do.